Welcome to College Recruiter, where we believe that every student and recent grad deserves a great career. I'm Anna Peters, Content Manager, and today I am joined again by Jeff Dunn, the Campus Relations Manager for Intel Corporation. So glad you could join us again, Jeff. Nice to be back with you. So we're going to, this is kind of part two with Jeff. We talked about resume tips, and today we're going to talk about interviewing tips, and we're we again will be zoning in on a particular audience. We wanted to speak directly to the female engineer students out there, recent grads, who feel like they need to, they, they need some tips to stand out in the interview. So um, we'll get into that very quickly. I wanna mention that Jeff Figgin is part of College Recruiters Panel of Experts, which is a group of professionals around the country who provide top-notch advice to our job seekers and our talent acquisition community alike. So looking forward to the conversation, Jeff. Terrific. Super. Let's get started. Um, especially for our female engineer students, um, their interviewing team may be all male. Probably will be all male to get invited to an uh, 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 an interview. Let's say at Intel, um, mm -hmm. it might be intimidating for the female candidate, especially if they're brand new in their career. So, what can a student do to mentally prepare herself? Well, first of all, employers recognize this, and uh, the goal of many. Uh, employers is to try to have a diverse uh, panel of interviews, but I would anticipate since traditionally you have uh, a lot of male leaders, male managers, anticipate that it's going to be all men, and then if there's a woman, it might feel even a little more comfortable, but sort of mentally prepare for that. Recognize they're just people. They want to hire you, otherwise they wouldn't have brought you into the interview process, so work real hard to build up your confidence. Be proud of what you've accomplished. Don't apologize or qualify what you haven't done yet. Yeah, that is a very good tip for, for young women out there. Don't apologize for what you don't have yet under your belt. Fake it till you make it, yeah, right? A lot of times it, it really weakens if you say, well, I, I don't have this or I haven't done this yet or anything that, that weakens what you've done. Be, just be proud. I've I've taken several courses and I've been a project lead and I'm looking forward to learning more. Right. Yep. Focus on what you have done, not what you haven't done. Um, so during exactly. the interview, how can a student describe her skills in a confident way without seeming arrogant, which I know not all women, but some women are afraid of, of, of being perceived as? Well, the truth is, Anna, that most people can, can sound confident. It won't sound like bragging if it's true. So it, it comes down to practicing, practicing with people you trust, practicing in front of a mirror. Uh, be comfortable talking about yourself. If you need to, you could say, well, people that have seen my work, my professors, my classmates would, would tell you that I'm whatever I am. And most people, it will not sound like you're arrogant, unless you're the extreme uh, extrovert and, you, and you're you know, yelling, it's not going to sound yeah. arrogant. So err on the side of being more confident because most students are nervous. They feel like they don't have a lot of work experience and they're, they're worried about things that are outside their control. So focus on your strengths, focus on being confident and practice your answers so you can say them without a lot of qualifiers and stuttering. Yeah, that's good. Practice in front of the mirror, you said, a friend, your cat, whatever. Just get the words out of your mouth before you go into the interview so that you have, you've heard yourself say it before. It's amazing even saying it one or two times out loud, how much smoother it comes out the third, fourth, fifth time. Mm -hmm. And especially, and you know, per, I don't know if you ever t um, advise this, but to record yourself too, because when you play it back, if you hear all the ums and stutters and, and anything else, you can hopefully correct that the next time around. Yeah, if you practice on video, even for a couple of minutes, it'll it'll shock you the first time and you'll cringe, but you get better. Yeah. You get more comfortable face-to-face. -face. You'll see that if you're fidgeting or scratching or looking down or, or not smiling, all those things will come out and they're, they're easily correctable. And again, practicing, getting some, some honest feedback from people you trust. Um, you don't want to go into an interview just to practice. You want to talk to people that are mm -hmm. there to help you in your career centers, for example. They can do mock interviews. So when you get to an employer, it's an employer you really want, and you've already sort of gotten the butterflies out, and you're ready to confidently project what, what you can bring to the employer. 
mock interviews, that's a great idea too. If so, if students haven't done that already, go to your career services um, and see if they've got any mock interviews that they can set up for you. And I heard another good Definitely. tip in there too. You said smile. Always good advice. Make sure you you smile <laughs> and show you, your enthusiasm. You, you sound so much better when you're smiling and also slow down. When we get nervous or excited, we tend to go fast and we speed up and we're excited and I can't hear you. It sounds uh, weak. It sounds distracting. Yeah. So you slow down, you always make eye contact, and you get across the major points that you're trying to without the qualifiers and without the stuttering. Yep. What about some common mistakes that you see during interviews? What are some, some of those? Well, clearly coming in unprepared. If you haven't done your homework, it's going to show. So if I say, what do you know about Intel? What do you know about my company? And they can't really say anything, that's going to be a negative. If I ask, what are your strengths or what are you looking for, and you give me kind of vague, generic answers, that's going to be a big turnoff. If you come in with um, uh, you know, heavy perfume or a distracting outfit or real gaudy jewelry, that's going to detract from who you are as a person. I'm going to get stuck on those big hoop earrings and I'm not going to pay attention to the person. Mm -hmm. So you want to dress conservatively. Um, you're obviously you're going to turn off your phone. You're not going to be chewing gum. You know, you're going to be engaged and excited to be there and telling me why that my job is something you really want. Yeah, great. So, is there anything else you would add to the dress code? Um, I think usually a as as nice as you can afford. So whether it's a suit or a blouse and skirt or blouse and slacks. Uh, High tech companies are pretty casual, but not to the point of like jeans and a t-shirt, more just business casual at least. Um, dress in, in something that's comfortable, uh, but something that you, you look your best. Mm -hmm. and, and so mm -hmm. you're, you, you look like you've taken the time for all your grooming and what you're wearing, that you're professional and ready to roll up your sleeves and get to work. Yeah. And you won't, nobody will get um, docked points for overdressing in an interview. The opposite is no. true. Absolutely. They, yeah. they know you're, you've taken the time to prepare. They know you're serious. Um, that, that's always a plus. Okay. Uh, what kind of answers can an interviewee give, an interviewee give, that will really impress someone, say, at Intel? Sure. This is one of my, my favorite topics. So it's important to have prepared some some stories, things you've done that you're proud of. So I call them success stories. Think about times where you achieved something specific, something meaningful, where you really felt proud of what you did. And those stories can be the anchor for as responses to behavior-based questions. So if I say, tell me about a time when you went above and beyond to help a customer or a classmate, you probably have done that several times. The interviewer is going to want to know a specific example. What was the situation? What action did you, you individually take? And what was the result or the outcome? And good stories ha always have a happy ending to the story. They have a positive outcome. So you completed the project, you added a customer, you saved $10,000. If you can talk about your contribution to something specific, uh, they're gonna be impressed. So rather than trying to come up with things off the top of your head, give them very specific examples. and it's okay to practice and script it because if it's true, it, it's worth telling the story. Great. And it is, it is, it is absolutely okay. Or you, I mean, you tell me how things work at Intel, but in, in my experience, it's absolutely okay for an interview to come in with their notes. If you have five, six success stories that you want to be able to convey in the next hour, you can make little notes and have that in front of you. And you know, you're not going to be reading off of it, but you can glance at it and remember what you want to say. Well, of course, in a phone interview, you want to have all your notes yes. in front of you. You want to have your resume, the job description, your success stories, a list of questions to ask them, and a blank piece of paper to take notes. In the interview face-to-face, -face, it's best that you have these committed to memory so you don't have to you know, look at your cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. I would certainly open up my written questions that I'm going to ask them. It shows you've been prepared, but you don't want to sound like it's memorized. No, like a robot. No. Any other general tips for, especially for engineering students that, um, to prepare and succeed in an interview? Sure. So usually you're going to be asked technical questions first. We want to see that there's a technical fit. 
but keep in mind that at least 50% of your success is going to be the fit. Do you fit in with our culture? Are you somebody that I want to work with at least 40 hours a week? So you want to smile. You want to be confident. You want to articulate your key strengths. Don't apologize for weaknesses. And give me a reason to hire you, if not in the position that you came in for, maybe elsewhere in the organization. Great. And so that begs the, the, or the, the advice for doing your homework on the company. You know, for an Intel, for example, an interviewee will want to go on and see what Intel's values are and see how you and your experience can, um, how you can communicate that you fit those values. Right. By what you say and certainly the questions you ask, show that you've done your homework. Show that you've prepared for the interview, that you're specifically interested in that company and that job. And I can more easily visualize you in that role being successful. You're not yeah. just desperate looking for any position. Great. Good advice. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's um, nice to speak with you. And um, for the students and grads out there, if you didn't already watch the Jeff's advice or video discussion around resume writing, uh, make sure to check that out. And Jeff, I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Sounds good. Thanks again. Thank you.